for the past eight years or so, I've been measuring different physiological signals, mostly with the idea to measure someone's health. But we found out to be able to do that, you need to measure someone for a long time, and generally on a regular basis, which is basically a couple of times a day, ideally. But that poses a problem, because you can only ask someone to do certain measurements for a certain amount of time, or wear a wearable for a certain amount of time, before they start getting fed up and stop doing the measurements. So we needed something different. We needed something that was unobtrusive to the subject. I mean, he would know to be measured, but they didn't have to actively do or wear anything. That's where the toilet came in. That's where the idea existed. But it wasn't until we got the opportunity to do uh, a demonstrator, to build a demonstrator for Lowlands, which is the largest festival, or almost largest festival in the Netherlands. And this demonstrator had to do something with food and food intake. So we thought, okay, well, we have this idea, and uh, food is uh, what you, you are, what you eat, so it should also come out. So we thought, can we build this? Can we do this? Because we had the idea, but we didn't know yet if we could actually measure anything from a toilet. So your researcher, me, researcher, you think, okay, we need a feasibility study. Or in Dutch, we quickly called this the feasibility study. <laughs> which basically meant that you go into the lab, you triple check that nobody's around, you pull down your pants, you stick electrodes where no electrode has gone before, and you start measuring. And it worked. We could measure from our butts similar things that what we could measure from our wrist or a chest patch that we normally use for these physiological measurements. So for, for Lowlands, we built three toilets, each of which equipped with a toilet seat that could measure the physiology. And in the pot, we had a sensor that could measure hydration in urine. So when the visitor did its business, we measured. When they uh, wiped their butts and pulled up their pants, we calculated. And when they walked back to the sink to wash their hands, we provided them with feedback. And instead of just saying, okay, this is your heart rate and this is your breathing rate, we said, okay, based on your toilet performance, this is your menu suggestion for the restaurant next door to us. <laughs> and we told them, look, okay, this is not scientifically proven yet, but the reactions were overwhelmingly positive because people saw for the first time that instead of leaving something, just leaving something behind at the toilet, they could also get something back from it. <laughs> and yes, of course, there was also the odd, disappointing reaction of people saying, it tells me to eat meat, but I'm a vegetarian. <laughs> well, that is unfortunate, but it doesn't, ne doesn't necessarily mean that it's wrong. <laughs> but taking a step back, why would we want to do any measurements at the toilet or measure anything to do with food? Well, to give an example, in 2016, already 40% of the world population was overweight. Together with that, diabetes is becoming one of the leading causes of death in the world, the majority of which has diabetes type 2, which is often preventable by having a healthier lifestyle. Eating too much fat and too much sugar is just not good for us, together with not enough exercise, and it can cause diabetes. But having, having a healthier lifestyle or changing a lifestyle can also turn it around. But that requires you to know what is too much fat and too much sugar, or more specifically, what is too much fat and too much sugar for me? Because it's different for everyone. And now, if I want to, for instance, know if I want to go outside, do I need an umbrella? Then all I need to do is grab my phone, open up any weather app, and if the app says it's dry, the raindrops can be on the window, but if my app says it's dry, it's dry. <laughs> but there's no such thing for my health. I mean, if I want to know if I get offered a piece of cake or a cookie, can I still have that? Or did I already have my portion of sugar and fat for today? Maybe my long lunch walk won't compensate, so I can still... No, nothing will tell me that. Because there's not enough data yet 
to be able to provide us that, with that information. But to be able to do that, we would need to measure for uh, on a regular basis and on the longer term. But that requires us to do, for instance, a cumbersome blood pressure measurement, uh, one of these cuff measurements, every single day, maybe, maybe even multiple times a day. And who's going to do that? Nobody. Because if you're not sick, why would you bother? And even those that are sick often cannot be bothered. But then again, even if I would know, would I act? I mean, I know that a cookie is not specifically healthy for me. But does that mean I'm going to refuse if I get offered one? No way. <laughs> so that means that even if I do know that something is bad for me, I don't always act like it. And that's where self-monitoring can come in. Can come in. Because if you get confronted with high blood pressure every time after you eat junk food, then maybe the next time you start ordering junk food, you're like, maybe I should eat something healthier. But even better, if you have a disease, and you can help control your disease and monitor your disease by doing self-monitoring, you might be more inclined to do these measurements. But then again, why would we put any time and effort in at all? I mean, if we can use the one place in our home that we visit every day multiple times to do these measurements, it wouldn't take any time at all. So how would that work? To give you an example, take for instance this recently diagnosed diabetes patient. She's worried about her health. Her doctor said, you need to change your lifestyle. You need to come by my office to do regular checkups, which are cumbersome and boring. I don't want to do it. But what if a doctor could give her home a tool that she can use on her own home or in her own toilet to do the same measurements at a doctor that her doctor does at the office. Then all she needs to do is install it. The, the toilet will measure the physiological signals, but also other biomarkers in, for instance, urine and stool. So that only thing she needs to do is sit. The data will go automatically to the cloud where algorithms are used to process not only the current data, but also past data to see how our health is progressing. And that can then be sent as feedback back to the phone, which she can then decide to share with her physician so that together they can come up with a plan to keep her healthy. But it's not only for sick people or already diagnosed people, that this can be a useful tool. Have you ever had something that bothered you? A bug, you didn't feel very well. You decided to have a go at it for a couple of days, but after about a week or so, you're like, okay, I still don't feel very well. I'm going to see my doctor. So you go to the doctor, he does his examination, and he's like, mm -hmm. maybe you should just um, rest for a week or so, and if it's not gone by the end of the week, then please come back. Which is pretty much the same thing as telling you, I have no clue what's wrong with you, but please come back in a week or so, and I hope that it passes by by itself. So you go home disappointed. But what if your physician could give you home a tool, a simple tool that you can just install on your own home in your own toilet? All you need to do your toilet, you install the seat, you then grab your phone, you install an app, and then the app will automatically connect to the device, and then all you need to do is simply sit. What we currently can measure with this seat already is several physiological parameters, like the heart rate, the blood pressure, but also, for instance, oxygen saturation of the blood. And then, together with your physician, if you have these parameters, you can figure out together what is wrong with you, so he doesn't have to send you home with nothing. So this seat, this current seat, is already being tested in people's homes. And not just to see how well we get out the heart rate, but also to see how well it's received. I mean, do people like using it? Do they hide it and put it in the closet when uh, visitors come along, or are they proud of using it? To be determined. 
in the meanwhile, we're also looking at adding more and more sensors, like for instance, urine biomarkers, but also stool. So that on the short term, what we'd like to provide is a simple tool that can help in detection of early diseases, like for instance, diabetes. But ultimately, what we like to do is also provide feedback on information about food and food intake and what the impact, what impact that has on your health. So it's that maybe in the end, we don't just have an app that tells you whether it rains outside. We can also have an app that based on your shit can tell you what you should eat tonight to stay healthy. Thank you. Thank you.